In this video, I'm gonna show you how I added unlimited power, AKA solar to my DIY Overland trailer. You can do this on a DIY trailer, you can do this on a pre-built, it's gonna work on everything. So go ahead, like the video, stick to the end, for a sneak peek of a new project I'm working on, which if you have a trailer like this or even a truck, it might interest you. So subscribe for that and let's get to it. Now I apologize for the lighting. It's very, very windy outside, so we're inside so you can hear me. Now I have two 100 watt solar panels. A thing you wanna remember is they're only 100 watts in ideal perfect conditions, which you're not gonna have. So a good thing is to probably estimate about 50%. So I have 200 watts of total solar up here. Uh, I'm seeing around 100, 140 max, and that is currently in October and November. And they're mounted to my aluminum extrusion, which you can buy from tnuts.com. That's where I got these. That's where I've gotten all of them from my previous roof racks and they've worked out great. I take a 5 8 inch drill bit and drill directly into the rails. That way I can drop my quarter inch carriage bolts and slide them along and mount my solar panel right to them. Then I'm just using these two way splitters to connect the solar panels together. Then a couple of MC4 extension cables to run down to where I'm mounting the battery. The next thing we have here is the tongue box. Now it looks great and pretty now, but it was quite a process to get to this point. So let me walk you through it. With my solar panels mounted, it was time to run the cables to the battery and determine where the battery was going. I'm pretty much out of space in my camper here, so I knew it had to be on the outside, which meant a tongue box. Now a tongue box normally would have been easy, but mine had to be difficult. Due to the designer of this trailer, it was me. The floor jack, when in its raised position, extends up past my trailer frame in the way of the tongue box. So I needed spacers. And I wanted to find a spacer that would stand the test of time outdoors, would be durable, would be rugged, and I wouldn't ever have to worry about it. So I found hockey pucks. Hockey pucks are made out of this very, very dense, strong rubber. I'm actually using hockey pucks that came from my truck, uh, from the previous owner out in Arizona, their Phoenix Coyote hockey pucks. So with my spacer solution figured out, it was time to move on to the next step. Now there's a lot going on in here, but just give me a minute, we'll explain it all. Let's start from the beginning. I knew I wanted to mount things in here permanently, but I knew I didn't want to go through the tongue box itself to keep things inside, introduce less holes for water to get in. I cut two pieces of wood, one for the back, one for the bottom. That way, everything would stay contained and it would have good surface to grip onto. With my bottom wood piece cut out, I lined the tongue box up on the trailer itself. With my spacer solution figured out, I was able to center it perfectly because otherwise it would have ruined me for the rest of my life. I drilled directly through the wood, through the tongue box, into the frame, lined up all of my holes. We started with three. I think that would have been enough, but I went with six just because why not? With my pilot holes drilled, it was time to drill them out larger with a step bit so that I could use my riv nuts. Now I'm using M10 riv nuts, and I believe this will be plenty strong. These have at least a pullout strength of five to 600 pounds, and no force on this is going to be attempting to rip it out. Everything is gonna be pushing it back or down with gravity. And if something were to happen of a flip or accident, I'm gonna have bigger problems just in general. So with all our rib nuts in place, it was time to just drill out the tongue box holes a little larger for my M10 bolts. And then I took a Forstner bit and reamed out the holes of the bolts. That way things could sit on top of them and it wouldn't be too much of an issue. Next, it was time to mount our battery. We have a NOCO Group 31 battery tray mounted directly to the wood. It uses this strap here to keep our 100 amp hour 12 volt battery in place and it does a fine job. I've cut some foam just to kind of smush it in this frame so it does not move at all. Now batteries and electricity can be scary. I understand that. This doesn't have to be. And let me show you. We have 12 volts, we have our ground, and we have our positive. Yes, I'm touching both at the same time and nothing happens. Now, I wouldn't want to arc this with something metal, and I wouldn't want to do this with an open wound or with hands wet. But, accidentally, you touch it, nothing's gonna happen. After that, it was time to mount our MPPT controller. You can also just use a PWM, it's much smaller, it would have fit better, 
but I got the solar panels and this charger on a kit from a lady on Facebook. It was used and I got a good deal, so I had to do it. So I had this MPPT controller in. Next, we had to drill a hole way at the bottom of this tongue box so that we can get our solar cables and our ground cable and our power in to the trailer all into the tongue box. So I used this custom 3D printed four input solar gland and it works perfectly. With my MPPT controller in place, with my hole drilled out, it was time to run the wire from the back of my trailer, which is where my fuse block is in the kitchen, all the way to the front. So we mounted it along the frame all the way. We put it in wire loom. And I'm gonna tell you, if you've ever worked with wire loom, this will change your life. And let me show you. This is a 3D printed wire loom tool. I think you can buy these. I'm not sure, they're free to 3D print. You should probably buy a 3D printer. I can line it up, can't really see. Drop this sucker in. It's literally life-changing. With this tool, I ran these cables all the way up the frame into the tongue box in about 30 seconds. That's literally life-changing if you've ever worked with wire loom. And it was time to start the wiring in the tongue box. Now this part can be daunting because there is a lot. Now the big thing you want to remember is red to red, black to black. Red is positive, black is negative. If you follow that, pretty much everything's going to be okay because it is a simple thing. It's just you have to do it a few times to get comfortable. So let me walk you through what we've done in here. Apologize for the view here, it is tight in here, so I'm gonna try and explain the best I can. Now with our cables coming up through the ground, we had to determine which ones were our solar positive, positive and negative. We had to have a ground for our battery to ground on the frame, and we had to have the power all the way to the back. With those determined, it was simply hooking them up. The solar charge controller, you want to plug ba your battery into this before you plug your solar in. I didn't do that. I plugged the solar cables directly in and then just unplugged the splitter up top and that works fine. But that's a general rule is battery before solar on your charge controller. With the charge controller hooked up to the solar, with the solar disconnected, it was time to hook up the battery to my charge controller. This is simply just determining the cable length and running it along. Now you'll notice I don't have much room here for this charge controller. It is much larger than I anticipated, and I was worried about airflow, and we get to that in the future, but this has been working for about two and a half weeks now, so if anybody complains to me in the comments, just know it works fine. With our battery hooked up to the solar charge controller, it was now time to hook up our battery to the rest of the trailer. So we did need to ground the battery, so we ran the cable, and we grounded it towards our battery, and then we had to hook up the trailer itself to the battery's positive. And I'm using this 60 amp resettable fuse. Now realistically, 60 amps is probably too much for this 10 gauge wire, so I will have to switch this out, but it's what I had on hand and I figured any fuse is better than no fuse. And if you've seen this camper build, you know that I have a fuse block in the front for my lighting, my fans, and my anchor power brick. So I had to take a cable, run it from my fuse block in the rear, through the rear wall, through the cabin, up into my shelving. So now up front, I do have power for my LED lighting, my fan up top, and my anchor power brick. And now with power in here, I can switch my lighting to make me look cool. Like I joined the dark side, or I am a good one. You'll never know. It was a good one. With this all done, I thought that was it. I'm done. So I put my trailer out and decided to get some of that sweet, sweet vitamin D in it and test my solar input. Now something I forgot to mention about 12 volt batteries is that they like the temperature that humans like. Not too cold, not too hot. And the general rule is if you're cold, they're cold, and if you're hot, well, they're probably okay. But I live in Florida, the sun is hot and powerful here, so I ran into some issues. This tongue box, obviously being black, acquired a bunch of heat and with no air to escape or come in, I was seeing about 150 degrees or about 52 to 55 Celsius, which is about the cutoff for this MPPT controller and the battery. So I knew there was an issue and I had to address it. So I ordered this temperature controller off of AliExpress. It came in 10 days and I wired it up with some fans. Now on this right side, I have an intake down below 
with a fan filter in place and on the other side next to the battery we have the exhaust. I 3D printed these custom vents for it. That way I know they're the right size. I don't have to buy anything. This only cost me about $2 in material. I'm using 80 millimeter computer fans that are rated for thousands upon thousands of hours of use. So I'm not worried. These only have gone on during the day and I'm assuming during the winter, I probably won't have an issue. So I wired them up together and connected it to my thermal temperature controller here. And I have it set up that if it exceeds 35 degrees, they turn on to suck cold air in and exhaust hot air out. With these installed, I set this thing out, waited three days, uh, took some measurements, and I found it dropped the temperature by about six degrees Celsius. So we went from 52 to about 46, which is still a little bit higher than I wanted. So I knew there was one last thing to try. And that was a vinyl wrap. And I did this very poorly initially by buying the cheapest wrap I could find at Target. And it went very poorly. It went so badly I debated not even showing you, but I'm going to so you can learn. Don't buy vinyl wrap from Target. So another day later from Amazon, we got some actual car vinyl wrap and I did uh, assume I could just do it. So I watched a video or two and gave it a shot and it came out okay. Somebody else definitely could have done it better, someone with more experience, but I don't think it's too bad for my first time. I also could have used a larger piece to fully cover, but I didn't have that and I didn't want to pay for it. This was just a proof of concept and I think it's going to work fine because it has. I've now had this outside and the highest temperature I've seen is 39 degrees Celsius, which is right around 100 degrees, which I don't think is too bad. We obviously still have black all on the outside, so this is doing nothing but attracting heat. And then the ambient air temperature is only the coolest it can go. So really it's dropped it nearly 15 degrees Celsius or about 45, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think it's mission accomplished. I have this thing where if I'm gonna upload a tutorial or a how-to or something I've done on YouTube, I wanna make sure it works for a while before I upload it. That way someone doesn't comment and tells me you're doing it wrong or it's gonna explode or the sky's gonna fall down or whatever. I can say it's working and it's been working. So this has been working. The solar's been working, the battery's been working. I have temperature controls monitored via Bluetooth um, from the battery and the charge controller and the most I've seen is that 39. It is only November, so we'll see over the summer what it will actually get to, but I think, it, it, I think it's gonna be fine. The trailer's outside getting its vitamin D, but I forgot to record an outro, so I'm gonna show you this real quick. Take a look. Stay tuned. Peace out.